Hey, Jace, good to see you. I'm sure you had a good off day. And how timely was that? I mean, regardless of the outcome of that series last couple of games, it was going to be an emotional series for you guys, no matter what I would imagine. Good timing on the day off to sort of regroup and, and, and recharge. Yeah, uh, for sure. We we were prepared to, to go up to Seattle. We had bags packed and the, the clubhouse guys had everything loaded up and, and we had um, uh, a late word that we weren't going to be traveling. So uh, we used the time to kind of meet up with uh, the, the entire group, kind of touch up on some things. So we used yesterday afternoon. There were a couple pitchers that needed to throw. They were planning on throwing before we got on the flight anyway. And then uh, had the entire group there, touched up on a couple things, and then everybody got um, early afternoon, late afternoon, evening to, to kind of kick back and relax and uh, knowing that we got to be ready to go today. Even this year and the travel situation, even more important and more significant this year to not have to travel up to Seattle and get these games uh, staying in your own ballpark. Well, it's nice always being able to stay at home, and certainly we've had a, a long home stand. So being able to add on to that and stay at home, especially for for uh, members on the team with families at home, it's it's very unique. I think we're going to be close to 17 days at home, so that's uh, that that's unique in any season. So that's always a nice thing. Um, you know, and we, we know that uh, this year's been crazy. We've had to adapt with a lot of things. So I, I don't think there's too much being thrown our way that, that you know, really surprises us anymore. As far as Chris Paddock goes, he introduced the cutter a few, a few outings ago. We've seen a few less curveballs. How important is it for him to have that third pitch at this point? Maybe, I mean, just in general, but also compared to really getting his fastball changed up uh, combination going the way I think everyone would like to see it. Well, we think it's important, and whether it's that little cutter uh, or or mixing in the curveball, I think you know most days it's it's sometimes a feel. Uh, which one feels better, which one can he land for more strikes, but uh, we know he's got it. At the end of the day, I think it comes down to his fastball command and the changeup and, and the difference in those two pitches, and then when he's able to, to blend a third or fourth pitch in and mix that in and, and really keep batters uh, maybe off balance or just to plant some seeds in their head, I think that's a bonus. It seems like he's got a pretty good feel for it, but how much of their is still the learning process of when to use it against which guys uh, complementing it with other pitches. There's still a little bit of learning period that needs to go on with that. Yeah, for sure. And, and our catchers have done a great job of being able to identify when to use it. And he's got a lot of, lot, lot of trust in, in uh, the catchers and certainly Larry and, and the game planning that goes on. So uh, I, I don't think we've ran into a situation that was a bad time to use it or anything like that. He's, he, he's mixed them in at the right spots. And uh, like I said, I think a lot too has to do with the feel and, and how he feels that day with whether it's the curveball or the cutter. And, uh, but hopefully today he gets on a roll, uh, can blend all his pitches in and get on the attack. I know the belief is that Fernando's just getting ready to bust out here at any moment. That's certainly the hope. In the meantime, has there been any discussion at all of, of changing his position in the lineup until that happens? No, we haven't had any discussion on that. In fact, we've been probably more encouraged the last two days. He squared some balls up and uh, hadn't had much luck. Uh, unfortunately, they've been at uh, some defenders, but uh, usually that's a, that's a good sign of uh, positive things to come. Thanks, Jason. Next, we'll go to Jake. Hey, Jace, obviously, in a normal year, home field advantage is, is much bigger than it is this year without the fans. But is there still something to be said about how significant home field advantage is, you know, not having to travel and getting to wake up in your own bed and that stuff? Or is it really just not that big of a deal this year? Well, I'd be lying to say uh, that, that we didn't have a goal to play the, the first round at our ballpark. That's something that, that we want to do, and we're in position to do if we can take care of, of um, uh, what we need to do and, and, and control our, our own destiny. So uh, we do want to play here the, the first round. As far as the advantage, I don't know because of the, the fan situation and not having being able to draw the adrenaline and the energy off the fans. Uh, but I do know that we know this ballpark well. We enjoy playing here. And uh, maybe there's an advantage of just 
knowing where everything is in the stadium, knowing our clubhouse, maybe just the comfort level more than anything. As far as uh, Jake Cronenworth is concerned, I know you've talked about him a lot, but obviously you have trust in all your guys, but did you expect his success to be so rapid um, as it has been for him at the major league level? I think it's safe to say his his just ability to adjust and how well he's played um, uh, to the level that he's played. I don't, I don't think we saw that coming with the consistency. I know we had a big group of guys that believed in him and, and knew he was, he was a good player. Um, but for him to do it as long as he has and to been uh, probably better than certainly we've even uh, expected has been a tremendous positive shot in the arm. Thanks, Jason. AJ hey, Casavo. Chase, what do you make of what it is about Jake that allows him to, that, that has allowed him to kind of be so steady and be so consistent, given that he is a rookie who's played 40 or 50 major league games? Yeah, he's, he's incredibly talented on, on both sides of the field. Um, he, he's very sure handed with his glove, he's a good thrower. Uh, he's obviously a shortstop, so he's got plenty of range and plenty of arm. He's intelligent, he's smart, he's got baseball IQ, he's got feel, and that's allowed him to adapt. I would say offensively, um, it feels like he's always on time and his bat's in the zone for a tremendous long period of time. So he's able to stay on different pitches. Uh, and, and I think that's why he's been able to hit lefties, hit righties, hit velocity, hit secondary pitches. Uh, so I think just with that combination, uh, ha has allowed him to, to be the player that he's been so far. What's Francisco Mejia's role now that he's back? Right now it's as the, the third catcher. It's as to, to fill in also defensively, uh, to be a bat uh, for us. Uh, he may DH a day. He may catch a, a day. Uh, we'll we'll kind of see where everything goes. But right now it's to fill several different roles. Um, and we've got a lot of confidence in his bat right now. Dennis Lynn. Hi, Jace. When um, Tommy Pham and Eric Hosmer come back, how do you plan to keep uh, Derek Sabrell Parr and Mitch Moreland both in the lineup? Well, I think when th those guys come back right off the bat, I don't know if uh, they're going to be playing a, a position every day. There may be a small little buildup um, as, they, as they progress through. So I think being able to keep both those guys, uh, Moreland and, and, and Profar, I feel confident that uh, we're going to be able to uh, get those guys the at-bats they need to, to, to make sure that they've got the momentum to continue um, helping uh, our team contribute and win each and every night. So uh, I feel confident. I look forward to the days uh, that, that both Pham and Haas are back, and we're optimistic that it's going to be um, very soon bearing any setbacks. Where is Luis Camposano at in his rehab, and is he close at all to coming back? He's behind both Pham and Hosmer. He's been uh, doing a little bit of combination of, of uh, going over to USD and getting some work in, and then he'll come over here for some more treatment. So I would say he's he's uh, a little bit behind both where Pham and, and Hosmer are, uh, but not – not huge significance on how far he is behind. Kevin Acey. Chase, what made you decide on Chris Paddock as the number four starter? As it were, and to move here into the bullpen, I guess more to the decision about Paddock, what made it that he was going to be a starter? Are, are you talking specifically with – why did he not go to the bullpen and, and Garrett? Is that what you're asking? Because we, we haven't yeah. listed we haven't listed one, two, three or anything like that. There you go. Why is Chris Paddock starting and not in the bullpen? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, uh, it probably came down to Garrett maybe having a little bit more upside in the bullpen with his pitch arsenal, a little bit more experience in the league. Uh, you know, a, a lot of bullpen guys are a fastball slider. Um, and and Paddock being young, and certainly both guys have, have come off arm injury. Um, so I, I think at the end of the day, it was, 
I thought we had maybe a little bit more of a wild card upside in Garrett with the fastball slider and curveball. And not to say that bullpen guys can't be fastball changeup primarily, um, but you know, just continuing uh, Paddock's. Uh, j just path at what he's doing. I think today is a, a big day for him just based on uh, we're, we're interested to see how he responds coming off that ankle, ankle injury as well. All right, we have time for a couple more. We'll go back to AJ. Chase, if down the road you need to move Garrett back to the rotation, you're, you're comfortable with, with putting him right back in there even if it were to take nine or ten days in the bullpen? You know, we, we haven't really – gotten into that just based on we know what our last nine games here look like um, when we get to the playoffs the first series is uh, potentially three games and the second one's five so realistically we we don't think we would have to answer that question until we get into some of those seven game sets uh, so we just haven't had enough discussion on it uh, I want to make sure we're fair to Garrett and not having to rock him back and forth. Right now his focus is on is uh, taking his game into the bullpen and everything that entails. So we, we don't think it's right or uh, we don't feel comfortable having him be prepared for both right now. So right now all, all our focus is how quickly can he transition and, and understand how he needs to prepare and get ready in the bullpen. What kind of reliever is he? Is he one inning? I mean, obviously he can go multiple innings, but how do you view him using him down there? We're still trying to find out. We know he can go multiple innings. Uh, right now we're, we're wanting to see some shorter burst, uh, but that's not to say that he can't go two innings or two plus or one plus or anything like that. But uh, we're trying to, you know, obviously last one we went one inning. Uh, depending on where we're at in lineup and game situations, it could be more, it could be less. Uh, so right now we're, we're, we're trying to get a feel for uh, how quickly he can transition down there and, and ultimately uh, check and see how effective he can be for us. Marty Caswell. Hi, Jay. So the last time we had a chance to speak to Chris Paddock, he spoke about feeling as though like the fans had, had turned against him. Have you had to speak to him about tuning out the outside noise? And how do you think he's handled uh, the adversity he has faced this season? Yeah, we talk to all, all our guys uh, fairly routine on on trying to do the best we can at eliminating noise. So I think right now uh, he's in a great place mentally. Um, he feels good about where he's at physically. Uh, and, and it's a challenge always. Um, certainly, you know, this year without having maybe as much – access or physical face-to-face -face communication interaction with with uh, people outside of, of, of our clubhouse. Uh, so I think he's done a, a good job of doing the best he can at eliminate noise, and it's a challenge. It, it, it's a big challenge, and it's not just with him. It's with uh, the majority of the, the, the men in that room. So we're, we're constantly talking about that, um, and we're constantly hopefully growing and, and getting better at that. Thank you. All right, we'll finish up with Andy Halburn. Hello. Hey, Jace, Garrett's a professional. I'm sure Garrett wants to help any way he can, but is there is there any disappointment for a starter to go to the bullpen, any adjustment there or disappointment for that? Well, trying to be as clear with Garrett, and, and this is 100% the truth, it's not a, a demotion. It's more on an opportunity uh, that, that we believe – that he's got a chance to impact uh, our games and impact the game more. So being able to step aside or take yourself out of the equation a little bit and, and understand that this is just where we're at and this is potentially the best way to, to help us out. You know, quite frankly, when we make the playoffs, you know, the, the four and five starter, there's really no role for them potentially at the, at the beginning. Uh, so we, we thought it would be best because we believe in, in, in his stuff and we believe he can transition down there. We thought it would be best to use these last nine and ten games uh, to give him a chance 
to to transition down there most importantly so i think i think the main thing is and it's 100 percent the truth it's not a demotion it's just an opportunity to pitch more meaningful games and more meaningful innings for us uh, if he can get it clicking down there